What you doing? I'm videoing. What are you doing? <laughs> What's the plan for tonight? All right, tonight we're gonna get this car on the lift and we're going to take the factory springs out of this thing and we're gonna cut them. In the past, I've had Ibox Sportline springs and many other springs that you pay a lot of money for. I wasn't impressed. They rode pretty rough. But I noticed when I cut my springs, the car rode pretty good, or at least about the same, I'll say. I'm gonna show you guys some shortcuts on how to take out these springs and do it safely. You're gonna need a couple of tools. You can run to Harbor Freight if you guys have one of those local. You can pick up all this stuff pretty cheap. As a matter of fact, we're gonna be using a lot of Harbor Freight tools tonight. Let's go ahead and get started. Have you seen what these things are going for on eBay? Mm-mm. Woo, we about to make bank. These things go for good money on eBay, actually. Are they factory cats or hot food? Yeah, they're factory. It's all factory stuff. Let's look over this car real quick. Like, uh, I wanted to actually make an entire video of this kind of by itself, but it looks like we're going to throw it all in one video tonight. I see Z row rust on this car and i am ecstatic about that we have quad shocks still in the car so i'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and take those off what in the hell is going on here is that tape that is tape uh overall man this thing looks really really good somebody has jacked the car up on the pinch weld all right so let's talk about this real quick like as you can see the fender sticks out past the body of the car the door at least and more than likely, this has something to do with it. Do not fret, guys. This is not a big issue. This is something that can be fixed. As you can see, we fixed that. Like I told you guys, it's not a problem. Also, in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to fix your ground effects, how to make these things straight again, or at least remotely straight, how they hook up, and everything else. Like this is the first time we've had this car on the lift and I was really worried that we we're gonna find just rust everywhere no rust zero rust on this car and as much as we may hate grease and oil as it slings all over the bottom of the car it really helps preserve it let's go ahead and get this done i'm going to show you guys how to lower your car for zero bucks all right you guys ready Ooh, here we go bam that's right. It's a good looking wheel. That is a good looking wheel. Guys, this is what we will be putting on the Project Fox. Now, in my opinion, if you want to do these things right and you want them to sit on your car correctly and you want it to stand out from the crowd, you need to roll your fenders. And guys, I caught so much flack last time for using a baseball bat. We went ahead and ordered a fender roller. It'll be here tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, finish unpacking these wheels, make sure everything's good. I gotta find my center caps. As soon as I find those, we'll pop a center cap in, show you guys what they're gonna look like, and let's go ahead and get started on this car. It does look good. Yeah, it does. That looks really, really good, guys. This is my first set of 17-inch ponies I've ever owned in my life. I'm just really, really excited about it, but that's not what necessarily this video is about. Let's go ahead and get started on this car. Now, we're gonna keep this very, very simple. What we're gonna do is take this brake line off right here, this bracket back here, we're gonna take that, I think it's a 10 millimeter bolt. We're gonna take that out and we're just going to let the brake line lay over here. Then we're gonna come up here and just take the top nut off the strut. Then the only thing left to do is to take the sway bar off. Just right here up top. Everything is going to fall down far enough for you to get your factory spring out and put a cut spring or either an aftermarket lowering spring back in. I will warn you ahead of time. If you're trying to put stock springs, like stock height springs back in with isolators, ooh, you need a spring compressor. Can it be done? Yes. Is it a bitch? Absolutely. 21 millimeters, what I'm using. Anyway, all you're gonna do is just come in and remove everything right here and set it up top, out of the way, no big deal. So at this point, you do wanna make sure that you have a jack under here. And what that's gonna allow you to do is take off all of these right here without the suspension falling and basically hitting the ground, uh, especially once you take the sway bar off. After you take the sway bar link off right here, this thing's gonna wanna fall. What I like to do is just go ahead, pull the strut down like this, kind of swing it out of the way, take that off next, 10 millimeter, and this off third, which is a half inch. Aha. 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. 
Now what that's gonna allow is for everything to kind of swing out of the way. And then whenever you drop the suspension down, it gives you plenty of slack here and you don't have to undo brake lines and all that type stuff. Guys, I've done this for years and I promise you it works. Just be careful. Everything will go back into place. Don't worry about breaking your lines or anything like that. They will move. A little bit of deep creep works great here. Bray that. Let that sit for a second and you should be good to go. All you want to do here is just put a little bit of pressure on the A-arm so that it doesn't completely fall whenever you take this off. And that's it. Down here, there's a flat spot right there, if you guys can see it. There's a flat spot where you can put a wrench, a pair of pliers, vice grips, crescent wrench, whatever you got. And from here, all you have to do is lower everything down so just get in here and just pop this thing out it should come right out uh, check up here to make sure your isolator is not stuck which ours was so when people talk about isos or isolators they're talking about this rubber piece at the bottom and this rubber piece at the top i typically always start with one coil it's easy as you can see the isolator pretty much stops right here but anyway just cut one coil off the front Go from there. If it's too low, then you can attach your isolators back and pick it up. But for now, let's just go ahead and get one coil cut off this thing. And that's it. So we're gonna start there. That's usually good enough, but it just depends on the car. There again, I'm not gonna be using the isolator, so I'll get a little extra drop just because of that. We're probably gonna get somewhere around three eighths to a half inch drop difference by not using the isolators. Plus it'll go back in easier. So I'm not gonna video both sides. I'm just gonna show you guys how I go about doing this. Uh, no, granted it's not always easy. I'm gonna be honest with you, even being cut with one coil. But the best thing I've found through the years is well, for one thing, get all the gunk cleaned out there's a pocket down here and the pocket basically stops right here there's a low spot so what you want to do is make sure that that point goes in that pocket sometimes it goes in good sometimes it don't it really just depends usually it doesn't take a lot now, what I'm noticing here is the angle of this is off. So if you turn your springs wrong and this end piece doesn't go down in this lowest point in the A-arm, then your car's gonna sit back high again, okay? So you wanna make sure that it's twisted just right. Push it down and push it forward. Just like that, okay? Now you just wanna make sure all your brake lines are gonna go back where you need them to things should push right back into place. Something else that you need to take note of is as you're doing this, you're gonna need to push this sway bar in link back over that way. How I go about doing this is get this really close to going back up in this and then just kind of push it over in there like that. That's it. I'll go ahead and address the elephant in the room. This car needs caster camber plates now. If you lower your car, you're going to need caster camber plates. So just know that ahead of time. You can drill and slot these out or slot them, I should say. It's best just to go ahead and buy the plates though. Andrew, do you have caster camber plates on your car? No. <laughs> Should you? Yes. <laughs> Has it ruined a set of tires in the front? Yes. Yes. All right, guys, I'm just simply gonna go ahead, bolt everything back up in the reverse procedure. I'll meet you guys in the back of the car whenever we do the rear coil. Only thing you have to do back here, guys, is take the bolt out right here for your lower shock and your quad shock. That is it. Uh, do it on both sides, the rear end will fall, and then you can just pull this spring out, cut it, and drop it right back in. Mighty greasy there. Yeah. All right. So at this point, you should just be able to bump that up out of the way. And that's all you got to do there. There's a 19 and a half on that side. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. 
think these uh these shocks are quite busted there maybe where the uh all this is coming from so that's it guys just take off your shocks here like we said quad shocks up there the rear is very very simple watch out there you go a lot easier on the rear to get out There's your top isolator right there. We're gonna start with a coil and a half now, and, and this is why. So just think of that being one coil, the difference between there and there is just not much at all. So, so we'll go ahead and just do a coil and a half on this, and that, that should get us close. I've got a feeling we're gonna end up going probably another half a coil on this, but I'll actually know whenever I go to pop the spring back in. Yeah. Oh, but you can see how much easier these things go in and out. And all you're going to do is put some tension back on the rear end of the car to get it back up so you can get your shocks started back again. Andrew brought up a good point, which is rare. But now uh, we're gonna go ahead and probably just flip these shocks because um, these wheels, the new wheels are gonna probably rub. So yeah, we'll probably go ahead and do that. So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, we're just gonna unbolt this and literally flip the shock around. I know a lot of you are gonna say, just take the quad shocks off. I prefer the ride with the quad shocks. Anytime you've got cut springs or a higher spring rate, these do help dampen the load, I promise you guys. Especially if your shocks are already a little worn out like these are, these will help you. So we're just gonna go ahead and flip those around, guys. We're gonna bolt all this stuff up. We're gonna drop the car down and show you the difference that no money spent can make on the look of your car. And then tomorrow, we're gonna put the new wheels on the car. We're gonna get this thing out and show you the stance difference. We're gonna roll the fenders, do some stuff like that. But tonight, I think this is pretty much going to wrap it up. We will lower it down and show it to you on the black wheels that we have on here right now. Just wait for tomorrow. That's going to be the big reveal. Now the car is not settled yet, but I know for a lot of you, this is about the height that you want your cars. Me personally, I like to go a little lower, but for right this second, this should work out. Now tomorrow, remember, we're going to roll the fenders. So we're gonna get this thing nice and rolled up in there so that when we do put these nice new 10 inch wheels on the back, we can really tuck these things in because we are gonna be running 275 on the back. Now, this car will also settle. Never ever underestimate how much the front end of your car will settle. If you were to take a measurement right now, the front end of the car is going to sit a touch higher. Andrew, tell them what's gonna happen here in the next day or so. Settle. settle big time way more than what you guys might think so give it a little bit of time cut your springs you saw what we did so we cut one coil up front and one and a half in the rear and that's pretty much going to put a spot on now you can come back and cut about a quarter of a coil off the front if you'd like so you can do like one and a quarter one and a half but if you give this a little bit of time it's going to settle down real nice for you something i do want to tell you guys is <clears throat> if you're going to be lowering your car like this and you're really concerned about the ride quality, the best thing you can do is go ahead and replace your shocks and struts at the same time. And the reason why is because your spring rate will go up whenever you do something like this. Now these are a linear spring, meaning as you cut them, the spring rate doesn't go through the roof like a progressive or a two-stage spring, but it will go up. So you have to have something to dampen that extra spring rate, right? So think of compression and rebound. It's gonna be really hard to compress and it's gonna rebound really quick. And you gotta have a shock that can absorb that. These stock worn out shocks are really not gonna do that. Well, that's gonna wrap it up tonight, guys. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully with some new tires on these things or some used tires and I'm gonna rob off some of my old wheels. And we'll go ahead and get these things on here and see what it's gonna look like. Catch you guys then.
There's the inside of the lip all rolled up. All right, let me go ahead and show you guys what this car looks like now that we've cut the springs, rolled the fenders, and put our new wheels on.